So today I've got something pretty cool to go through. You might have seen my review of the LifeX Switch on my channel probably about a year ago now. This review I went through a few different issues that I had with the LifeX Switch. Ultimately I found it a pretty good switch, I really like the design, very useful for turning off and on physical devices that you actually need, you know, to flick the power off, as well as LifeX um, lights which the power stays on all the time and they're just soft controlled. Um, so it solved a lot of those problems that um, physical switches had an issue with, but still had a few flaws that I really wanted to be addressed. Some of those flaws were there was a bit of a delay when you hit the, uh, on, you know, the buttons on the switch, um, I want to be able to change the colors, um, just have them more flexible than they are. Well, excitingly, and after a really long time of waiting, LifeX has finally come out with this new 3.90 firmware, which enables all the things that I've been talking about. Uh, today, I wanted to go through all the different features that it's come out with, show you how I've set it up, and um, how this, I reckon, makes it the best switch you can possibly buy at the moment. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the app and go into firmware update and hit um, firmware update and you'll see that you've got uh, updates for your switches. So I'm going to go ahead and update those ones. Great, now the update is done, it tells you how to set it up. Basically, the main difference, or one of the main differences between how LifeX switches were previously configured and how they are now, is the wiring, or the lights that it actually, like the physical lights it controls behind the switch, is different from the soft buttons on the front. So you don't necessarily have to have one of these buttons to line up to a physical switch behind it. You can use the button over here to control that physical switch, or you can use a button in another room to control a physical switch from this LifeX light. I think this is a really great change, it enables you to do things like two-way switching, as in have two different controls control one physical light, um, and really like expands the flexibility. So let's go into it. Um, we'll also see we've got this new accessories part of the page here on the settings page and it's got these switch settings so we can go into switch and then we can go for example here I'm in the office let's go into the office switch you can see it's got a lot of the settings I had before name firmware uh, location what group it's in but now you've got two more setup options here buttons and wiring so I'm going to go into wiring first because I think this is the first thing you would set up if you've got a light basically what you want to do is um, go through like what devices you actually have connected to this um, behind it and make sure that um, you've set them up properly. So terminal one for me, uh, this connects to a LifeX light. So I've got two LifeX lights in this room, so they just power it, keeps the light on the whole time. Uh, terminal two, I've got this connected to the fan in this room. Um, and then what that does is lets me control the fan in this room by clicking on the buttons or from any other button. So that's wiring, and then you've also got buttons. So these are actually independent of the terminal, you know, that what wires you actually have connected to them. You can make these do literally anything, including controlling things via HomeKit, which massively expands the amount of things that you're able to do with the switch. So you can see on button one, I don't have it doing anything now, and I'll show you why that is for a second. Um, button two, I've got controlling this, you know, the lights in this room. So this should um, turn them off. Um, button three, I've got for the fan, and then button four, I've got for the whole place. But what we can do now is if I go into button one, which I don't have selected to anything, I can now get it to control non-LifeX devices from other rooms. So for example here, I've got, um, it's not set to anything now, but I've got this option of selecting non-LifeX lights and I can select bedroom fan. So bedroom fan is not this room and I can get this button, which is not physically wired to the bedroom fan to control the bedroom fan from the other room. So I go ahead and hit save. I can go ahead and use this button to control a physical device in another room which I think is super cool unless you do that two-way switching or three or n-way switching. Um, those, those are the main changes there. Um, obviously you can still control device, um, group, location, and uh, set a scene. Um, and then if we go out of that, we've got some other options here which are also new. So we've got brightness. Brightness refers to the brightness of the LEDs when they're off. If you've got something that's a physical device and turned on, the device will light up to um, the full um, thing. So you can see that's fully lit up and that's at 100%. You can't change the brightness of that, but you can change the brightness of the lights that aren't on. So if I go into brightness here and I put it up to, let's say 60%, you can see the lights get brighter and go all the way up to 100%. You can see they all look like they're on, which is not that good for knowing which light is on or not on. Let's just go back down to um, 30%. 
turn that device off. Um, you can also control the haptic feedback time. So this is when you tap how long it um, kind of vibrates for. That's as you might've seen in the original view, a little motor. You can bring it all the way back down to zero. Um, and there's no vibration at all. But it basically just goes straight away. Um, interestingly, the haptic feedback, it kind of like does the haptic feedback and then does whatever command you want. So there's a little bit of a delay. If you've got haptic feedback, like 30 milliseconds, um, while it does that little bit of movement and then does whatever action that you want. Um, I found anywhere between zero up to 25 milliseconds, you can't like it, you can't really feel anything. You kind of need 30 milliseconds or above to actually feel the vibrations. I think that's why the default's 30 milliseconds. Finally, you also have the choice of backlight color. So you can see here, I've got this like pink color. I'll just set the brightness to 100% so you can actually see the color. I've got these like pink color on the lights, but I can go ahead and change that back to what it like originally was, which is this kind of yellow, yellowy color. Or you can do literally any color you can think of. So I find red really good. We've got red in the bedroom because red is the least like offensive color. When it's on, we've got the fan on. It doesn't light up the room like every other color. Um, you know, you can set them to like a yellow. You can set them to like blue. Um, you can even set them to like a whitey color. There's just so many different options here and I think it's super cool because we always knew these were um, colorful, you know, RGB LEDs because we could see when like an error happened or something, they turn red. It's great to be able to expand that and actually customize the colors of your different lights. So one of the problems I had in the original review was the delay between when you press it and when the lights actually respond to what you want it to do. And the reason for this was because the switch had to communicate out to the internet and then come back to your devices to actually get that change to go. Um, this isn't necessary, well I didn't think it was necessary because all the lights could be controlled via HomeKit which is entirely on your local network. So it's just the switch part that for some reason needs to go to the internet. But now that we've got HomeKit support built in to the switches, we literally don't need an internet connection at all, which means there's less delay and if your internet goes out for some reason, your lights still work. To pair this, you just go pair, you can hit get code. It's a little bit jank because I think this is what happens when you try and add HomeKit retrospectively to a device and it doesn't have the QR code or a code printed on the device itself. Go ahead and screenshot that, 7832309. And we can go ahead and pair, pair the switch now, pick where you want it, your, your home, set it up. Typed in that device, go, uh, that code, go ahead and hit continue. I found this to be very quick and very reliable. And now you can see, boom, I've got it paired with HomeKit. Let me go ahead and pick which room it is, which is here in the office. And let's go into the Home app. And now we can see here in the Home app, we've got LifeX Switch. And we've got two different options for LifeX Switch. We've got something with a circle and a square and then like a switch. So this one, the switch option, is what actually uh, physically controls the relays behind. So this is controlling the actual um, like the physical power of the buttons behind. Uh, the HomeKit app's not that great here um, with this interface. And then the other thing we've got here is the actual button. So as you can see, when I open it here, I've got basically button one, which is the first one, button two, button, button three, button four, and I can set it to basically do anything I like. So let's do button one, single press, we can do uh, office on, one annoying thing with HomeKit is there's no such thing as like a toggleable light. You either need to, you basically need to put it in a state, like on or off. So the way to get the light to be toggleable, so when you press one button, you can get the lights to turn on and the same button to turn them off, is you need to set up a shortcut, which has something like, if the lights are already on, then turn them off. Otherwise, if they're off, turn them on. A um, little bit annoying. So just for now, what I'm gonna do is a single press, I'm gonna make turn on the office lights and a double press, I'm gonna make turn off. Then as you can see, as I hit button one here, you can see the action in HomeKit um, like lights up. And if I do a double press, you can see it lights up as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, pretty much responds straight away, especially with the single press. Like pretty much as soon as I click it, the action happens. You can see the lights are actually responding. Well, I don't know if you'd see it, but the lights are responding pretty much straight away. And you've now got, instead of having four different actions, which are only limited to the LifeX app, you've now got 12 different actions, single press, double press, long press for each of the buttons, and you can literally get it to do anything in HomeKit. So if we go ahead and add like a long press and we can make it do something, um, I don't know, for example, I can get it to turn on, oh, let's say the fan in this room, um, the fan also obviously being exposed from this switch. Um, let's just do turn on, done. And if I hold down this button, 
can see it activates a long press and turns on the fan. But you can literally get to do anything. If you've got any home uh, assistant accessories, which uh, like I can turn on the TV, turn off the TV, change the channel, all those kind of things. Um, basically literally anything that you can control in HomeKit, you can now control from one of these switches. So this comes from being, makes the switch go from something that's only useful in LifeX and you know has a little bit of a delay and not really that customizable to now something that I think anyone who's interested in HomeKit or Home Assistant, Home Automation can now use this switch as a really, really solid um, local switch, which has the dual benefit of not only being four buttons, which you can interface with and make do anything, but you can also get them to, um, like you, you can control those terminals behind. So you can have four like dumb devices, which might not necessarily be Wi-Fi connected and get them, turn them off and on via the HomeKit app. So I think, I don't know if there's any other products that already do all these things and are HomeKit compatible. I think it's super cool. It's taken them quite a long time to get um, out and ready, you know, for people to use. Um, there's been delays after delays, but I've been using this new firmware for about a week and it's been rock solid. I haven't had any glitches, any weird things going on. It's just worked every single time and honestly, it's been super cool. I'm really excited to see what future integrations come around and what other things I can, you know, spend some time in HomeKit kind of customizing and get my house to do a whole bunch of different things just based on hitting these buttons. And I've still got the flexibility of being able to like turn on the fan, which is the manual um, switch that I have connected um, to this room. So anyway, that's my look at the new LifeX Switch firmware 3.9. Uh, I hope you're as jazzed as about it as I am. So I think it's super cool and um, I don't know, I'm like, it's been something that's been, we've been waiting for for a really long time and I'm really glad that LifeX has delivered on it. And I really think it really expands LifeX switches to be a much more versatile product um, and something that I can even further recommend beyond what I did in the original review. So thanks for watching this quick video, or well, it probably ends up being quite long. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Technologetic.